All right, guys, welcome back to Carbon Car Systems. Today, we're going to be showing you how to fit the head unit to the 2014 Subaru Impreza's. This is a WRX STI that we're actually in. We're going to be using this Kenwood DDX 917 WS. This is actually a Toyota specific widescreen unit, but because Toyota and Subaru are the same company now, uh, some of the vehicles came out with these widescreen units with the rounded edges, and you can actually do a direct Toyota replacement into those, and it actually comes up really, really good. So, we're going to step you through how to do the install and um, show you what it's going to be like but it's, going to, it's pretty quick and easy it's all plug and play majority of it and we're just going to run a few cables so let's do that all right first step guys we've got to get the original fascia off the cool thing about this unit that we're putting in you don't need any extra parts but you can do a normal double din and have some fascia panels but because this is built for this widescreen unit it's going to go straight in no extra parts required fascia's got to come off first i use a non-marring pry bar these are plastic they're not going to scratch anything and i just put them down the side here and you can leave a Ford. Okay, they're very easy to pop out. It's not gonna do any damage. These are flexible rubber dashes. It's um, very straightforward. And then you're just gonna pull it forward. <clears throat> and it's gonna come out. Up the top here, at the back, I'm gonna bring the camera around. You can actually see there's a plug that you have to undo. And there's a little locking tab on top of it. It's for the hazard lights. There's actually two of them for the enter button. I'm gonna show you in just a second. So you can actually see what we're looking at. A little bit tricky. Here's our pry bar here. Okay, there we go. So these are the two two plugs up the top here. If you have a look at them, you got little locking tabs on top. So your idea is that you got to push them down to release the the plugs themselves. So there's two of them. All right. Then down the bottom, you also have another one to a locking tab on the top of it. Just push that and pull that out. Be careful not to scratch anything. So. That's the fascia panel off. So it's pretty quick and easy. Then you got a couple of screws. So you got two screws on the side, four along the bottom. Now the other thing you want to do as you're removing this head unit is actually just turn the car on. Make sure you got no CDs left in it because once you depower it'll take it out. It's a bit of a pain. So to get them back out, you got to put them back in. So all right. Phillips head screwdriver. They're very quick and easy. This bottom section will actually pop off. You'll actually be able to pull that right off, but you can put it back in as you go, or turn the unit in. Now, you've got to lift this up a little bit as you're pulling it out, because it has on the bottom here a plug. This is the earth for the chassis. <clears throat> so you can just lock that, um, push the locking tab on that one, pull it out as well. <clears throat> then you're going to sort of pull it forward a little bit. It's going to be quite tight because of some of the plugs on the back. You're going to stick your hand around the back and just start undoing all the tight plugs on it. The tightest one is the actual USB, which is this grey one. It's got a little locking tab on the top of it as well. Once you get that one, it sort of gives you a bit more room to get the rest. Um, two, three, four, five, six, so seven tabs total. Now, <clears throat> you want to be careful not to scratch your dash when you're doing that. Just hold your hands around the metal if you want. Put some rags and stuff underneath it to make sure you don't scratch. That's about as easy as it is to remove the unit. I'm going to run you through some of the stuff that we have here so you can understand what each plug does. So you've got, got an earth plug here. So that's that single black black wire with a blue trace is your earth. Um, that just earths onto the chassis. You can put it back on when we put the brackets back in. <clears throat> These ones we're not going to actually use. This is a GPS receiver, which is on the old unit. Um, this one just does like speed sense and handbrake. You've also got your steering wheel control plug, which is this one. We are going to be using that one. This one is your antenna. So that little square one is your power antenna. So I'll give you a sideways look at it. Then you've got your speakers and your powers are these ones here. All right, but we're going to show you those. We've got plugs for everything. So we're going to put a whole kit online and we're also going to put some of the parts they're going to use online as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, so we've got it on the bench now. So as you can see, when you come in a bit closer, check this out. It'll give you an idea of exactly the same shape unit, so it makes it really, really convenient. No extra fascia panels or plastic to actually fit these units up. And uh, what's really cool about this, the DDX 917, it comes with all the plugs that you need to actually fit it. Um, oh, sorry, there's two extra plugs, but a lot of them are actually included in the box, so we'll just open this up and show you. <clears throat> so here's the main two harnesses that actually come in it. These are the same plugs that are in the car, so it'll be direct fit. So that'll go to the car, that'll go to the unit, and really just two wires. And then you've got built-in steering wheel controls as well. So this is the exact same plug in these 2014 models. 
that will plug in the back of the Kenwood and give you steering wheel controls as well. And the only extra two parts that you will need are these two. So we get these from Stinger Australia. The part numbers are actually uh, the STAAT10M, which is a Toyota antenna adapter. So even though it's Subaru, it's uh, actually a Toyota antenna adapter. So that will do our radio reception, AM, FM. And then you also have a USB adapter. So this will retain the factory USB in the car and go into the Kenwood with that uh, male insert there. So that part there is called uh, MX or MX Toy USB, I think it is. T-O-Y USB. We're gonna put them on our website anyway so you can actually get them from us so you, you can't buy direct from Stinger. Um, the other things that actually come in the box we're quickly gonna need and we'll show you. GPS receiver, so that basically improves the Apple CarPlay navigation and the Google Maps navigation. You do get two extra USBs, so these are just uh, extensions because there is two USBs on these Kenwood units, two different colours, and it's important that they are different colours because uh, the Android for their Android Auto is actually going to be grey, Apple Car uh, CarPlay is black, so it's kind of cool they do that. Um, and then you also get this in the box. This is an AV input, audio visual input, and you can actually run external like DVD players, game systems, etc., on the screen if you wanted. So. Uh, we're not going to use that today, we're actually just going to install the unit, but you know it has those capabilities as well, which is kind of cool. Now, we're going to continue on, we're going to do the brackets now, so it's real quite easy. They're built to go on each other, so when we do them together here, the easiest way is to put them alongside each other, and you're actually going to see exactly where the holes line up. You're just going to move them straight up, and it's going to be pretty simple, really. So there we go, we're going to use these front ones here. You can actually even use the same screws, but you do get some screws in the box as well. The only thing you really need to worry about or think about when you're doing this part is uh, making sure the head units are the same way, facing the same way, left and right. Because it is the same on either side, you can get it mixed up. Don't over tighten these either, you'll thread them. Just uh, do them nice and Firm. We use a drill, but uh, I suggest doing it by hand if you've never done it before. All right, so that's done. So this car now, we're going to actually go into the car and run the microphone. So we're going to run that into the middle because we need to plug that in. And we're going to do all the wiring that we need to do as well. So let's go do that. We're going to do our main power plugs first. So this is the loom here. It's pretty straightforward because the unit is built for the vehicle. So it's going to plug straight in. And the only wiring we're actually going to need to do is this light green wire is actually the handbrake wire. And you can actually earth that straight out. If you earth it out, It'll allow you to run the DVDs while driving so your passengers can use it, CD, DVD. And it's important that you earth it. It's meant to go to the handbrake, but if you do that, you can only access some features while you're parked. So, you know, as long as you just take some care, and, you know, don't use it while driving. It's for your passengers, okay? Um, you're just going to strip that and hook those two together, and we're going to solder that. So it's going to be quite simple. So we actually twist it around, and we're going to solder that on there. You also do have this uh, reverse reverse wire which is basically going to tell the screen to flick over if you had a reverse camera but these Subarus actually have the reverse camera up the top here so you're actually not going to need that on this vehicle we can actually cut it off and just tape it up nice and neat so we have all this excess in here and that'll be nice and easy so what we're going to do we're going to solder this wire you can actually use quick connectors and stuff like that but I always recommend soldering it's a better way to go the other thing we're actually going to have to solder, which we might as well do it at the same time, is this. So we have the antenna adapter, and it actually only goes in one plug as well, which has fallen down. There it is there. So you'll see these just line up and plug in. Now typically, if it doesn't have a second wire here, you don't really need this blue wire because it's not a powered antenna, it's just straight antenna. So we wouldn't have to do that if we don't really want to, but I'm going to do it anyway just because I have a bad habit of making sure wires get connected if I think they should should be, but they don't really need to be done. But So we're going to hook that blue one, which is the uh, antenna wire. I'm going to hook it onto the blue one out of the stereo. So essentially on some vehicles, there is a powered antenna, 
and I just like to make sure we do everything really, just in case. <clears throat> so we're just going to solder those two, and then that is that. The next step from there is we've got our USB adapter. So you can see that here. We're going to plug that into this grey USB, and it's just a direct plug-in, and that will go into the back of the head unit. And that will actually retain your factory USB that's in the vehicle. Now, when you plug this into the actual stereo, you want to make sure you plug it into the one that you're going to use the most. Because you're retaining that factory USB, if you want to retain that, then it can be uh, your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It can be one or the other, but not both, okay? And then you're going to have your secondary one, which you can run somewhere else in the vehicle. We're going to run it into our glove box because it's one that's not going to be used all the time. So just make sure that one becomes the one you're going to use the most. And this is the next step. So if you have a look at this, this is actually your steering wheel control adapter. So that's actually just going to plug in as well. And that will go into the back of the head unit. And that's as simple as that. We do have to program the steering wheel controls on the head unit. But we can show you that at the end once we've got the stereo actually in the car. So there you have that, guys. We actually just soldered those two wires and we've just taped it up. We use tester tape. It's a factory cloth tape. Makes it really nice and still flexible and neat. Now the next step, we, gotta, we do have to run the microphone in. Um, this is really the trickiest part of the whole thing and it's not even that tricky. Uh, we put these up in the center up here just so that it's away from the sides. You don't want it near the sides because if you have your window open, you're going to get a lot of the wind noise on your microphone. So we put it up in the center and we're going to run it across the hood lining here down. We're going to pull the glove box out to make it easy to come up through the center. So we actually pull this pinch weld off. It's really easy just to pull it down. This rubber that's along the seal here. Once you pull that down, it gives you a bit of room to actually run the cable and you can actually put it up real easily as well. It's built to come on and off, so it's not a bad thing. And you can actually pop these forward. When you pop these forward, it won't come all the way off. There's actually a latch on it. And you want to run behind the airbag there, which is a rubber section here. I'll, I'll grab the phone, let me show you. So you want to run behind this, this section here, okay? Because this is actual airbag. Oh, sorry, focus a little bit there, so. That's the actual airbag. We're going to loop behind that so it doesn't interfere. So we're going to quickly show you that. The easiest way to do that is actually put the cable around first up, around the back of it. Like that. And pull it through. And then you can actually loop it around the headlining. Okay. And you just pull it down a little bit. And you can actually tuck it up in there. And once you've got it tucked up in there, you can just pull it with your left hand and it'll, it'll make it nice and neat and tight, like tight so it's never going to fall down. And as you can see, that bit's done. You can actually pop that back on, make sure it's all sitting nice and neat. And we can actually run that down the A-pillar. And it's probably the easiest way to do it. And if you come around on the left-hand side here, we'll just cut the video and you can see the left and we'll show you how to pull the glove yeah, box. So we're on the passenger side now, guys. As you can see, we've run the cable down there. The easiest way is to actually just use your non-mounting pry bar again and then you can pop this section off. Okay, just pops forward. It's just four little holding clips. If they get stuck in there, pull them off, put them back on, and make sure they're on there and you can put that on in the end. The next way to get the cable across is actually to pull the glove box out because it's not even that hard to do. On the left hand side, as you open it, there's a little section here that you're going to pinch together. So you're going to pinch that together and pop this section off. Sorry. There you go. It's actually pinched it and you can see that's come loose now. So that is just the thing that slows slows the actual glove box down as it opens. And then all you gotta do is pull the left upwards towards yourself and the right, and they, you actually hear it pop. Okay. Once it pops, so there's the two sides, it'll actually pull right out. These are the two clips, so you're basically just pulling them off. And that'll make it easy to get your cable across and up into the center console, tied up nice and neat. And uh, you know, quite easy to do. So. We've just routed it through the back section there, tied along the looms and come up in the center. It's actually over here in the center now. We'll show that in a minute, but I just want to show you how to put the glove box and the rubbers back on because it makes it a little bit easier. Just push the rubbers on straight away because the cover will go on that after you put the rubber in. But what we're going to do is we're going to line these two sections up with the sections that are on the car. And the easiest way to do it is actually have your glove box right down so you can actually see it and do it with your glove box open like that. And as you do, as you push it up, you're actually clicking the place. Okay, so it's, it's it's really that easy. So you can actually see. There you go. It's nice and firm. And you can pull on it, and it's not going to go anywhere. Then you've just got to latch this left-hand section on, pull that back out, and push it on like that. And your glove box is back in. Make sure it releases slowly. If it doesn't, 
feel like it's right, try it again. Make sure you get it right. And then put that section back on. And we're done. We're back in the center. I'm going to put the head unit in now. We're up to actually plugging it all in, mounting it up. So the best thing to do, like I said, make sure you know what USB in the center console you want it to be, whether you want an Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. This gentleman here, he wants it to be Android Auto. So like I mentioned, uh, gray is Android Auto and uh, black is Apple CarPlay. So we're not going to use the gray because we're going to use the adapter and we're going to put the actual iPod one in the glove box for this gentleman. So if you wanted to, you could actually run that when you had your glove box out, but you can also just uh, feed it through. There's a little hole and you can actually reach around and grab it. It's not that hard to do. I'll quickly show you if I can grab it. Where is it? There we go. And you can actually pull that through and you can reach around, it's not that hard. So he's gonna be able to run his iPod in his glove box there, so that's very easy and we'll make sure we plug that in. Now, <clears throat> this is pretty straightforward because all the plugs can only really go in one section. I do the USBs first because we tape them together so they don't come loose. So they've just got these little covers in them. So you can get rid of those, you don't need them. And what we do is adapt them and tape them up. <clears throat> so black to black. Just gonna use Android Auto into his center console. I'm going to tape those together so they don't come loose. It's just a, you know, a habit. So when you put them back in the in the dash, it's never going to come loose as you're pushing it in. You don't have to pull it back out. And if anyone else has ever worked on the car. So there you go, guys. We've just taped those up so they don't come loose. As you can see, we're going to bundle the microphone up a little bit because it's quite long and we just want to keep it neat as well. So I'm just going to bundle that a little bit, a little bit of tape around it. That will just sit in there neat without going everywhere. Straight in, okay, microphone. This goes into the section that says mic. You've got the GPS. Actually, we haven't done the GPS antenna, so I might grab that quickly. This, guys, this is the GPS receiver, and it will just plug into the back of the head unit, and you can mount it in the car. Make sure it's up high and there's no metal above it because it needs to get line of sight from the sky, and it will go through plastic. It is GPS, but it won't go through metal. So we actually put it on top of these air vents. It's double-sided tape, so it'll actually sit up there and stay there, and then it just sort of sits in the back there, and you can plug it in. So we're gonna plug that in. And that's literally all the wiring that you're gonna to need to do. So it's pretty simple as you can see. Plug all the long ones in, power. This is the main power loom. You have the steering controls, which we'll do as we're pushing it in to be closer. You have your AM FM receiver. And you have a couple of these yellow wires. So this Kenwood deck can actually take a dash camera in, which is kind of cool. It's the part number is DRV N520. It's a driver recorder cam, so you can actually run that off this unit. It's kind of cool. You can run a front camera. It's got video outputs for if you want to run uh, rear screen DVDs, and it's got rear camera input. So if you did want to run um, another camera for whatever reason, or you didn't have this factory reverse camera, you could run one and run that as well. Uh, the last one as we're going in, we're just going to put in the steering wheel remote. It actually just goes in the top top left as you're looking at it. So that is the remote in. It doesn't stay steering wheel remote, this is remote in. Gonna plug that in. Just make sure nothing's loose and it'll tuck in. Then you can push it all back in the dash. There's plenty of room in these cars. Like I said before, make sure you don't scratch anything on your dash and just be careful as you're sliding it in. And tuck everything away. And there you have it, okay? One of the things you actually might want to do, I forgot to tell you, is actually put the earth back on the bottom here, okay? So I didn't do it just then, but you can actually reach in and grab it, and we'll do it. There it is there. Okay. Now just sliding that in. It is quite a short cable, so... You probably want to do that last like I've done anyway. <clears throat> And voila, in the dash, put our four screws in and then we can test everything out before we put the panel back on. Screw it in, make sure we put this metal bracket back on that bottom section. Okay, you don't want to forget that, it just returns it back to normal. So it's the six screws. We put them in first to make sure it's all secure because before you do any testing, but you don't want to put the fascia panel back on until you've checked everything. You want to pair up your Bluetooth, check your hands-free is working, make sure you haven't pulled out the plug as you're mounting it in, check your USB, steering wheel controls, everything. Otherwise, you're just going to have to pull it all off and start again, or <laughs> no, not start again, but pull it all out. So we've done that now. So the next step 
turn the ignition on. I'm going to show you how to set it up. These are great units. If you're running a reverse camera on them, they'll run the reverse camera even while the unit is booting. So we could technically put it in reverse now. If you had it on this screen, it would work straight away. But like I said, on these Rexes, it's up the top. So we don't adapt those down. A couple of seconds to load. What you want to do is turn the demo mode off. If you were running a rear camera, go into the camera section and turn reverse camera interruption on. We're not running one today, so you don't need to delete, do anything with that. Display, you can change the key colors. So any of this, you can adapt to the colors of the vehicle. So this has got red lights everywhere. So we'll make it red. And uh, you can change the viewing angle, okay? And all that does is just change the way you look at the screen to make it a little bit better for your eyes. So you can actually set that up to your own personal style. You can do that later. So this agreement here is just uh, it's telling you be, be safe, don't use it while driving. <laughs> things like that. You have to agree to it, but you can automatically remove this after 10 seconds if you tick this box. And that is the unit. So next step from here is actually the program steering wheel control. So you go into this menu section, settings, user interface, steering remote control. You're gonna wait two seconds till this lights up. Don't press it, but then what we're gonna do is gonna map the steering wheel control. So if you come out a bit, so we've got volume up and down. So what you do is hold it up for two seconds and you'll see on the screen, this will pop up. And then you map it to what you want it to be. So this is volume up, and we go volume down, volume down. What else have we got on here? We've got track up. So we'll scroll that down, track up, track down. You can actually customize these however you like them, really. I mean, it's not a big deal. If you, if you get it wrong, you can start again. Uh, mode, which is source, voice recognition. So this is a cool unit, it actually has voice recognition because of the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can scroll right through and it's near the bottom, this little microphone symbol, and that will actually work. And then you've got answer calls and hang up calls. Answer calls, hang up calls. Okay, once you've mapped everything, click learning complete, and that's it, it's done. Very cool unit, so we'll go back to home and we'll show you here if we're in radio, I'll show you the steering wheel controls are all working. Uh, you can see left and right, very simple, straightforward. Search for the radio stations, press and hold them on the stations you want. Now, one of the cool things is, this has a Harman Kardon system in this vehicle and it will actually work with the new Kenwoods and everything we've just done there, plug and play, you don't need to do anything extra, the Harman Kardon system will just work. So, all these model Rexes it will work on, not a problem. Imprezas, WRXs, RSs, STIs, uh, whatever you want. Um, next step, you want to pair up your phone. So that's actually in the settings. So go into settings, uh, Bluetooth. We won't test it now because we haven't got the client here, but you would go in, pair your phone up, make a phone call to someone, make sure that's going to work, and also plug your USBs in and check those. So we're going to check those off camera um, just because we're filming on our phone. So uh, it's a little bit easier to do it off camera, but do those things before you put the fascia on, and then when you're ready, do that last. Right, we've tested it all, we're just going to plug it all back in, straight forward, plug down the bottom, two plugs up to the top, you can't get them wrong, they'll only go into the ones that they're meant to plug in, do the bottom one first, straight in, top one, stick your head around, have a look, just click that in, and then do the top one, and then once you've clipped them all in, sit it on, and line them up. You want to line up these locking tabs into the section up the top here. So, I don't know if you can see that. These will actually slot into these holes. And you line them up first and do the bottom as well. On the bottom, you want to make sure this slots into the holes as well because you can miss them. So, just slot it in, push it in, turn the hazards off if you bump them. And there you have the unit. It's a very sleek looking unit, looks factory. I mean, Absolutely killer. Cool thing about this is it's actually got some gestures as well. You can actually set up gesture control. So if you go back into your settings again, use the interface, has this thing called gesture control. And what that is, you can actually swipe in front of the screen to do certain things. So you saw that go back to the home screen then. But you can actually set that up to do different things like front cameras, hang up calls, go to your car play. So here, if we swipe up, Swipe down, swipe up, we'll go home, swipe down, I'll answer calls, current source if you swipe right, car play if you swipe left. But you can actually change them and map them to different things, much like we did with the steering wheel control. So we can actually go home and, uh, you know, pretty cool little unit. So that's uh, unique to this unit. It's actually not on any other Kenwood unit that they've released this year, just on the Toyota ones. So there you go.